Credit score doesn't necessarily dictate the terms of the loan offered. Borrowers and borrowers, excuse me, in every credit score category ranging from super prime with scores of 720 and above to deep subprime with scores below 580 were given loans with APRs that ranged from 0% to more than 25%. I, I find that hard to believe. And, and the reason I say that is somebody with, with a subprime credit score of 580 or below uh, isn't getting 0% from anyone. Okay, and somebody that's 720 and above isn't getting um, a high, typically high interest rate loans. That was one of the things that was kind of interesting in this article, and we'll get to some of the stories in a moment here, but they, they profile loans of people that had 720 credit scores that ended up getting stuck with a 15% APR uh, uh, you know, auto loan. It just didn't really make a lot of sense. You're right, Zach. It doesn't make sense. I can't make sense of credit and never have been able to make sense of credit. Um, but uh, the, what the takeaway from that bullet point to me was, yeah, you're, you're probably going to get 25% or, or a much higher interest rate if you have a 580. If you have a 720, you're going to fall in that zero to two and a half percent range. Okay. Then this next well, this next bullet point was interesting. Some high credit scorers get high priced loans, while on average borrowers with low credit scores are offered the worst terms. About twenty one thousand borrowers out of the eight hundred and forty eight thousand that they had with prime and super prime credit scores, about three percent of total borrowers in the group received loans with APRs of ten percent or greater, more than double the average for high scores in our data. Let's, both of you spent a long, long time in the dealerships. Does any of that, does that make any sense? No. Not at all. And, and, and the reason it doesn't make sense is if they, if they shotgun somebody's um, credit to various banks, if they, if they send the credit application to a half a dozen banks, um, they're, they're not going to look for the bank that gave them 8% and then charged the customer 10. I mean, they're just not, at least in my experience. No, um, they're uh, not. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't see that. But, but what, to me, what this points out more than anything um, is that people need to take responsibility for their own actions. They need to know what their credit scores are. They need to know where their credit falls. Typically, your credit that you're offered on a car loan is the credit that you've earned based on your past credit history. So if you haven't, you could have a high, a 720 credit score, uh, but that could be based on having three credit cards with a $500 limit on each and you've paid them all well, but that's not auto credit. And so that type of, of credit score on, on somebody's profile isn't going to get you the best rates because you have no auto history. Yeah. And so to jump off of that, well said, Ray. Um, I don't see how somebody with, in my years of experience, I never had a customer with a 750 or an 800 score, which would be considered higher tier scores getting 10%, even if you are limited, even if whatever may happen with that said, scores aren't all that. So you might have a really high score, but be limited. That still doesn't mean you're going to get 10% though. It does, that just does not make any sense to me. Now, there's always going to be that markup option. Uh, A finance manager could use this well, Mr. Customer, you have limited credit. Therefore, instead of getting the 0% that your score qualifies you for, because you're limited because it's a picture, not just a score. It's a credit picture. Um, it's going to be 3% or 4% instead. That could be something a finance manager would say. But if you've got a 750 score, you're not going to be paying 10%. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. So this is what I thought was interesting about the article is they actually yeah. they profile individuals. So here we go. Let's let's break this down. Take, for example, in 2019, when GM's lending arm financed 73 month loans for two consumers, both living in California, both buying 2017 Chevrolet Trax SUVs 
valued at around $12,000. Neither borrower had a co-borrower or received financial incentives. They both earned between $5,000 and $5,500 per month. Each financed about $18,000 in total in the transaction, and both had prime credit scores ranging from 660 to 719. Right. But one of the, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, first of all, a 660 is not a prime credit score. Okay. And, and the second thing, if I may, if, if these vehicles were valued at $12,000 and they're financing $18,000, well, then that shows that either there was negative equity from a previous vehicle that got rolled into it, or there was no cash participation from the customer because how could you possibly be, be financing 50% more of the value of the vehicle? So exactly. that's going to impact rates. We don't know enough about this picture, you guys. We exactly. Don't know enough. That 660 score could be just the score. And everything surrounding it could be bad. For example, maybe that 660 sto- score owes on utilities. That's not good. Now that 660 is a bad looking 660, not a good 660. Another bad one would be maybe they had a repossession many years earlier and it's still on there and they haven't reestablished auto loans since. What I'm saying is there are so many things around so that many factors. 660. Yeah. And the negative equity going into it. The, there's People don't understand there's a structure here to a loan, not just a score, but structure. And- and, and, you know, just because you're a, six, a 660, looking, looking more deeply at their credit history, um, they might have been maybe three times 30 days late on their current car loan. Well, that's going to impact your rates going into your next car loan. Um, so let's, let, let's, let's finish painting this picture, though, and then let's keep diving in. I just want to make okay. it clear to everyone because yeah. not everyone's seeing the screen. So, so yeah. one of the borrowers got a loan with an APR of 4.9% and a scheduled okay. monthly payment of $283, while yes. the other's loan a month later had an APR of 14.1% and $383. Mm-hmm. For the life of the loan, the first borrower will pay almost $28,000, roughly one-third more than the other borrower, who will pay less than $21,000. GM declined to comment. I want to cue both of you up here because I think you're doing a great public service which is a lot of people don't have the expertise that both of you do, which is the nuance that could be affecting this. They're going to read this Consumer Reports article and they're going to say, bad dealers, bad finance people, bad banks, when in reality, you're both painting a much better picture here. There's negative equity. There's other factors beyond just credit score. I wonder how much even just a month between the loans being processed could have to do with this as well. So sorry to interject, but again, there's the the full picture here of this profile that they're providing is mm-hmm. that the same people got you know drastically yeah. different credits uh, uh, APRs. If, if I may, if I if I can if I can paint the picture in a way that most people might be able to see it, let's say this is a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, okay, and and Consumer Reports is looking at four of those thousand pieces and they're not looking at the other 996 pieces that help to make up how a bank determines what rate you're going to qualify for. So you can't just say one was a 719 and one was a 660. That doesn't mean they're, they're equal in how a bank is going to look at it because there's, you don't have all the information to know why GM's finance arm would look at one customer at 14% and the other at 49 They're drawing conclusions without having all the information. They are. They're painting a narrative. They're painting a picture to put out there. What? Here's what. how I would fix this. I would recommend that some staff of the CFPB and Consumer Reports go and shadow a finance manager for a week. And watch that finance manager, watch the sales manager as well. Put these things together. Put the structure together. Go see for yourself. Go shadow why one person, you know, who has a 620 gets this and this person gets that. Um, Then you would have a much clearer picture to present to people so that they can, yeah, understand. And and Zach, I don't think either Kimberly 
or I are saying that there aren't some dealerships out there that, right. that take advantage of people. There are. Yeah. Okay. And, and neither one of us is saying that dealerships aren't looking to make back end F and I product a uh, profit. Exactly. And, and neither one of us is saying that, that the F and I departments might not be marking up the rate that, that the, uh, the customer could have gotten had, had they had the opportunity to go directly to their bank. Um, but what the picture that consumer reports is painting it just it, it doesn't have enough data it 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 doesn't have enough of the pieces so that we can have a clear understanding as to why there's those differences 